parade. They went over, the men had the business meeting in the morning and the afternoon, and then in the afternoon we had a parade out to the cemetery, and then uh, in the evening they, ha they would have a dance. Now the thing is with the Fife and Drum Corps, we went to go to all these things because Major Runkel had a musical group there, and the ladies loved us. The ladies loved us. We we would escort the get the uh, national officers in whenever would go to sit, you know, for for a banquet or something like that. And then sometimes they they would even play for a dance, but they were small then. They're they're at the Gettysburg uh, uh, Hotel. But one one of the things I liked at the Remembrance Day, uh, we would have the parade in the afternoon, and then the Department of Pennsylvania here would have a banquet in the evening. Now see, a lot, a lot of Remembrance Day was run by the state of Pens uh, Department of Pennsylvania, and they would have a banquet in the evening. Now see, a lot, a lot of Remembrance Day was run by the state of Pens uh, Department of Pennsylvania, and they would have a banquet in the evening, and I would always go to the banquet. As, as the governor, I would all, you know, I would parade in the parade with Abe Lincoln, and and uh, uh, I would go to in the evening, and then there is where I usually presented the license plate to the national commander, and then I would also, I a lot of times I I always give a little souvenir or something to the national officers, so the some of the national officers have. Uh, have uh, the Abraham Lincoln uh, dollar coin because I I forgot but I had a little package they had coin I had a coin made up in a plastic bag with a little sign compliments of, of uh, Camp 15 and I would put one at each one of the table spaces for the national officers so as a result of going 10 15 years of this I got to know a lot of the national officers from all over the country. The idea of the license was to, for them to take it back home and possibly somebody back home may want to buy one. And I always carried a couple extras to the to the dinner table with me, usually sold two or three there at the dinner table. You know, it was just kind of a sales pitch thing. But but I used to I used to do that. And when I would walk the street with the people I would meet a, a group of people. I would talk Grand Army and and the, the Sons of the Union veterans and the women's organization. Not so much done when we were on paper, but I still talked up the Grand Army, the Sons of the Union veterans, uh, the Civil War research. And you all know the one basic question: if you belong to the Sons of Veterans and somebody knows it, where do I get the records for my ancestors? That's one thing I think you all get that question when we have our recruiting tables up here. Anytime I would go anywhere and, and you're connected with, that, with this organization, where, where's the record? Where's the database? They, they all want to know and you have to explain to them in those days that everything was basically on paper and a lot of it was destroyed. We, we just had that here a little while ago, lady that was quite involved. Dave, Dave and I are both sick of it. Uh, a lot of, uh, the last one in the family died, relation moves in, they move, they, they move in either the, the trash collector or, or they, uh, uh, they throw it out, burn it, get rid of it. A lot of that stuff was destroyed. <laughs> but then again, today there's still a lot of it around and through your modern facilities, we now, I understand, we now uh, now have a database of, of Union Civil War veterans in the national level. And they're finding more all the time. So I think the modern part is, is really terrific on it. But I'm still gung-ho on trying to get, get it. And the best way to do it today is my way is to get the young people involved in doing something. 
I've got a, a 14 year old granddaughter who loves to shoot my son's cannon. Yeah, she's, uh, she's from Haiti even. And she is one of the crew of the cannon. She's, uh, she's the powder monkey. I, I'm even there, I sit there, give them a bag of powder in their sack, give them the pajoka, projectile goes up and puts that in the, uh, puts it in the end and the other, the rammer loads it and stuff like that. And she even sets off the charges. We were at a competition a while back. Out of 27, we fired 26. That was the first time we fired it. The second time, we did a lot of work in between down at the fort in target shooting. So the, the second time, we had done a good bit of target shooting with that gun. We went through the tight. She, she blows off most all the charges. Number, number two out of 26. <laughs> you thought you'd have give her a gold piece. She got a medal for being on the crew. We've even got to the point now, we have a family crew. Myself, my son, my grandson, and my great-grandson. And, and uh, we're all enthused with that. Well, anytime you're around any people like that, and you get visitors, they're, they're asking questions. Even now, I don't have one in my pocket here. I forgot to put one in. But anywhere I go, I have applications. Now, I'm sure there's probably applications at National, if somebody wants to hunt them, of my name as a sponsor, and, he's pro and the fellow could be from Massachusetts or California or anywhere, because most of my intermixing was as a governor. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, you, when, you're, when you're portraying a part like that and you're serious with it, you follow through as it should be. When someone wanted to stop and ask me something about the Civil War or about the organizations, you explain it to them. You talk to them. And a lot of times I would, uh, now, you're from up in there, and they want to know, well, where do you find stuff? Well, you go to your, go to your uh, historical society up there. Go to your newspapers. When you check your newspapers, check the, the Memorial Day issues, because in those days a lot of them were weeklies. Mm -hmm. And I did. I got a whole stack of them at home yet from when I did this Perry County one. I just hated to throw them away. And I'm going to have to give da Dave a couple of big boxes. I don't know where he's going to put them. Of, of just, well, full pictures like these. You know, pictures like these. I don't, I don't want to throw them away. I know Dave won't throw this one away because his dad's picture's on that one. But, uh, and, and different ones, like your... Your, na your, your national officers for a number of years. But uh, things, things like that, uh, boy, I, I'm wound up now. You, you must have turned the machine off. You were all gold. Well, you were one of the guys I took quite an interest in. Joe Long, fellows like you, because you're young, I, I, I liked your articles about your research over there. Mm -hmm. at, at the, over there. I remember when that was the original inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go back there, you, you walked in that place. I also remember a few horror stories. <laughs> I, won't even, I won't even talk about that. Oh, yeah. I saw a guy step inside of a cannon when they pulled the lanyard. <laughs> Luckily, first bull run. Oh, I got with, with my... Uh, with my uh, artillery outfit, my Naps Battery artillery outfit. I was in 100th anniversary, Bull Run, Antietam, Gettysburg, 100th, 135th of uh, uh, Antietam was, uh, I think, was the strongest one I remember. <laughs> they even took tons and tons and tons of mulch and covered the McAdam Road going through where the battle was going to be. 17, 18,000 reenactors. At that time, I had dropped the uh, artillery outfit and was my son's sutler's helper. And while I was at that, I, uh, I pinned on a silver star and a little gun on the side, and I was a sheriff. I used to go up and down. I knew all the vendors in the, in the roads. 
and a lot of the people. Do you have any memories of reenacting on original battlefields? Oh, yeah. yeah. The first one, the 100th anniversary of Bull Run. Mm -hmm. And that's the one where the fellow went spread eagle on the cannon next to us. The, the old man, the gray-haired old man, was on the lanyard. We found out he was 90% deaf. Now, this is, if you want to get your computer and look it up, Loomis's battery from Michigan. The, the old, uh, they, we were alongside of them, and the next thing you know, they, the Confederates start to overrun us from the side flank. as the way it was laid out. We had just fired. The one next to it, uh, for some reason or other, was a hesitation, and they found out later on, the old man thought they said fire. When they said cease fire, the kid heard the cease fire, and he was on the one side. He stepped around, boom. He went about from here to there. Great big charcoal. Uh, we, all, we, all saw, we all saw it the same one, had another Another incident, I, I, think, I think that's a report. Lancaster Fencibles down here had quite a unit. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it or not. The Lancaster Fencibles were dressed like the Iron Brigade, and they did a lot of drilling. They were real proud. They were a bigger unit. They were, they were right on the, on the front line. The two lines were like this. They were on the front line there, and they were really disciplined. Over the other side is a gang of Georgia National Guard, and they're using 3006s. See, they, they were not reenactors. The, part of the theme was down there, they wanted some reenactors from every state that was in the original battle at Gettysburg. And so that where they didn't have reenactors, they went out like the colored ones have with the colored troops when they, down in Philadelphia, they have a, you know, a display or some pageant or something. They, they went out and more or less picked up these National Guard men. Well, the next thing you know, the National Guard kid, and I, most of us could hear, you know the sound of the gun. And next thing you know, you hear pop, 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 pop. You know darn well they wasn't shooting a musket. <laughs> and they formed a V and they're running towards the center of the line, which is the Lancaster Fence. Of course, they had rules and regulations and safety. They're up almost to it, and and the shout went up, grab the flag. Rules. No touching the other unit's flags. No bayonets, no ramrods. They come running up there, and they get pretty close. When the captain in charge of the Lancaster Fencible fixed bayonets, and that was a no-no from right from the go. Fixed bayonets, and every one of them men snapped back, put the band on her, and her posed. And those kids were about, about this close. When finally one of their officers woke up and hollered, Hall, they were in a V shape. They, they were intent to do it, as far as we're concerned. But these are, these are incidents that each one of you have some of these. If you're in any, anything like that, you have incidents like that. But the realism at the 135th Antietam, I, I was sleeping at 6 a.m. in the morning, and all of a sudden I hear a boom. I jump up and look out in the tent there, and here's, and here's a couple of big flashes of cannons. Over there is a cornfield. They were following the script, you know, as close as they could, shooting the Confederates into the cornfield. And then a little later on, when they developed the later battle, I went up on the rise there. That you couldn't have beat it. Hollywood, Hollywood couldn't have beat it, as far as I'm concerned. And Hollywood saved many thousands of dollars. And that's when they started to get smart and go after the reenactors. And you, and you guys are you are all, you're involved in in the in the reenacted stuff like that. That's when they went after the reenactors, just like the, the movies they made and stuff like that. They, they make a donation to one of one of our Civil War causes, which is probably quite less than what they had to go out and hire 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000. How many of you saw the latest movie, Lincoln? 
did you realize that the cannon from there came from Charlie Smith Gull? Charlie Smith Gull rented. They came to Charlie Smith Gull. He gave them quick instructions on the cannons there. No, I could, I could pick up many, many different things, many different times. I'm just disappointed now that I've missed out on a lot of things. One thing I'd love to went to was the uh, remembrance of Lincoln's assassination mm -hmm. with the Victoria Dance Group. And, and one, one good thing about being in a dance group, I never wanted for a partner. I still don't. I was just, uh, and actually, to, to, to keep my fingers in this uh, so strongly, I was just over to Gettysburg on Memorial Day this year. I was over there and I didn't dance. They, because of the, the pandemic, you know, everything's been canceled. And I I didn't dance because my legs have pretty well given out on me. But I was there and, and got to talk to a number of people. Well, I better let you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> Did very good. Yeah, yeah we got a lot of material.